Yeah. Are you a child of God? Give him some praise in the house this morning. Come on, praise him. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Everybody all right this morning? I'm not Pastor Dana, if you can tell. Amen. But you got what you got. Amen. This morning, we'd like to look at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. The passage of Scripture that I think that we have to deal with every day of our lives. In fact, I have. Keep the right perspective. Because we are challenged in every day. Every day there's a challenge. And if we don't keep the right perspective, we will not enter into what God wants us to enter into. So right now the enemy is fighting for your perspective. And we're going to look at Numbers chapter 13. It begins with verse 30. Are you ready? Say amen. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take the possessed, for we are more able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. How many know you got bad reports? Of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through though which we have gone is, as spies is a land that devours inhabitants, and all the people we saw are men of great stature. Therefore we saw giants. The descendants of Achan came from giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, for we were in their sight. This morning I'm going to try to preach a message. Keep the right perspective. Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning. You're an awesome God. So, Father, I pray today that you would help us to clear our minds and ask ourselves honestly what kind of perspective we have. Do we have the right perspective or the wrong perspective? In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. We all face challenges, but it's not the size of the problem. It's our perspective of that problem. It's how big or small we make it in our mind. So right now, you're, you're in a problem. If you're not in a problem, I got good news for you. Monday's coming. Amen? You're going to have a problem. And the problem is that they, we make them bigger or smaller is because of our perspective. And uh, I preached a message years ago. Whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? I think that's where we're in every day. Every day we wake up, we have challenges, we have obstacles, we have problems at work, we have problems with our family, we have problems. If you don't have any problems, I'll give you a couple. We all have problems, and we all have to, who, what, what report are we going to believe? Are we going to stand on the Word of God? Are we going to believe? Are we going to keep the right perspective? I mean, this is where we're at. Ever since I said yes to the Lord, I had to fight for my perspective. I know what the Lord says, you know. I mean, even when I said yes to the Lord at the first time, you know, I, could I do it? Come on, top. the odds were against me that I couldn't be a Christian. Somebody say amen. So some of you are facing that odds, but I'm here to tell you, if you take the first step, God will see you through it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody says good preaching, Tom. Amen. <laughs> I remember the first time, you know, I shook up the whole town of Somerville when I Felt the call in ministry. They thought I seen a ghost in the chicken house. I said, no, I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> and then we went down to our first church, and, and, and it was in the boonies. I mean, we couldn't even find it. We're on our way home. And the car come by and flashing its lights, and I said, and we're in the, I mean, we're in the hellhole swamp. It was bad. Francis Marion Swamp. And, and I, I saw this light come in and flashing. I said, good Lord, now we can't find the church. Now we're going to get beat up. And I pulled over and said, you must be Tom Bunning. I said, how would you know? He said, who else would be coming down here like this? You didn't find the place. I had a choice to make. Was I going to believe God, this is the, the door that God opened, or I'm going to believe what I saw? And we went to the parsonage, and it was so run down and dirty that I took a shower with my socks on. Amen. That's how bad it was. It was bad. And I looked over to Janice. She was crying. And she didn't see me, but I was crying. And I said, if I ever get out of this hole, I'm never coming back again. I had the wrong perspective. Guess what? I end up going right there to that church. And that church, which I thought would be 
me, feeding me, promoting me. Because I took the worst church in the South Carolina district, and we turned that thing around. God did. Because all I did is just had full of faith, believed God could fill anything. Amen? I believe if the church would hold 100, you put 100 in it. Amen? Somebody say amen. And so it's what we see, how we, how we, our perspective. What are we going to believe? Whose report are we going to believe? Are we going to stand on his word this morning and trust God? You know, Moses sent 12 spies out to the promised land. Ten came back and said, we'll never defeat these people. It is, they're, they're huge. They're large. But the other two, Joshua and Caleb, said we're more than able to do it. And the Bible tells us that they had a different kind of spirit. And folks, if we're ever going to make it in these last days, somebody say amen. I mean, I, mean, I had to stop watching news. I was a, a, anybody with me? Because if I watch it too much, I begin to believe their report. And I get discouraged. Somebody say help me. But I know my God will make a way. Our God can turn things around. God, turn it around. Say it. God, turn it around. Turn it around. Give him praise now. Our God is bigger than our problem. Our God is bigger than the things that you're facing today. I know you're, some of you are facing some big things. But if you will magnify the Lord, somebody say amen. We are more than able. We are more than able. Both groups here saw the same giants, the same situation. The only difference was their perspective. One group focused on the size of their God. And the other focused on the size of their enemy. And right now, let's get real. You're in a situation. You're either lifting up the God or you're lifting up your enemy. You're magnifying the Lord or you magnify the problem. And that thing can get bigger than the problem. You can imagine, I don't know about you, but I can, you know, I got an old story, but here it goes in a way. You've heard it a hundred times, but this is 101. Amen. Because everything I think about in your mind, I remember years ago, my uncle wanted me to come down to Florida, and he had a place down there, and we went down there, and me and Janice, and we were tickled to death to get away, and it was down there, the weather was nice, and he kept saying, I want you to go to this restaurant with me. I want you, he kept pushing it, I want you to eat this salad. I said, what's so great about a salad? And I started eating that salad, and I smelled a strong fishy. And I said, what is it? He said, octopus. Ah. All I could see though, in my mouth. Now, I had a little fraction piece of meat. I mean, you, I didn't know I had it in there, but I could taste it. You know what I'm saying? But the more I said octopus, are you with me? The bigger it got. And I had to get enough nerve go to swallow it, and it was nothing. I made it bigger than it is. And that's what happens in life. We wake up on Monday morning, and we begin to think about it. How bad it is. How would this happen? And that could happen. And maybe this has happened. And that's how it happened. And we make the problem bigger than it is. Somebody say amen. And so... Out of the two million people camped around next door to the promised land, only two made it in, Joshua and Caleb. Could it be that your perspective is keeping you out of what God has promised you? Could it be that you don't understand why you haven't reached the, what God has promised you? Maybe it's because you yourself have the wrong perspective that's holding you back. And number one this morning, everybody said Amen. We're going to get out early. The older I get, the shorter it gets. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> what you focus on, you magnify. What you focus on, you magnify. And when you magnify something, you don't change the size of the object. You change your perspective of it. That's why David said, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, somebody say Magnify. By the Lord, but he's an awesome God. He is a big God. He's a God for you, not against you. Somebody say, he's a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody say amen. And he said, magnify. You know why? Because David learned 
to make God bigger. Amen. And when David faced a Goliath, he never called him a giant. Everybody else did. Everybody else talked about how big he was. Everybody else was intimidated by him. Are you with me? That's why you got to be careful who people hang around with you. You know, you don't need people to greet at how bad it is. Somebody say amen. Good preaching. David faced Goliath. He never called him a giant. Everybody else was talking about the size of the giant. Everybody else was talking about the problem, what was going to happen. But David called him an uncircumcised Philistine. His attitude was, if I'm going to magnetize, magnify anything, I'm going to magnify the source of my strength. And I just want to tell you, if you lack a little source of your strength, why don't you just brag upon the Lord? Somebody say amen. You know what I'm saying? We all like to be bragged on. Oh, Janice will brag on me, you know. Oh, you're looking good, huh? I'll go take out the trash, you know, start flexing my muscles. Somebody say amen. We need to magnify the Lord. And you make, I tell you, when you start magnifying the Lord, you can sense his presence. In the midst of, of, of the midst of the obstacle, in the midst of the pain, of the midst of the unknown, I'm going to tell you, what report are you going to believe? You got to keep the right perspective. Number two. Somebody say number two. And we're not only going to three, because that's high as I can count. Amen. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. You could be easily be overwhelmed. If you're not overwhelmed, you will be for the days out. And it's, it's easy to get overwhelmed and think, I don't have a chance. But no, God is saying, don't be intimidated. Do as David did. Get a new perspective. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives within us. I want you to listen to this. I found and it's through experience and through pain and through, is everybody here? I found that the size of my challenge is an indication of the size of my future. I found that the size of my challenge is an indication of the size of my future. Did you know what made David King, his giant, his obstacle, Goliath. And that thing you are facing now that you don't think that you can overcome, when you get a right perspective and, and believe God and stand on his word, that enemy, that problem you had, that obstacle, is not there to defeat you. It's there to promote you. Oh, can you give the Lord a praise? Come on. Now, I know you might be in tough times. But the right perspective will help you. The right perspective to have is, I'm not staying here. I may be down, but I'm coming out. Amen. Somebody say amen. I'm coming out. I may be depressed, but I'm coming out of this depression. I'm not buried. I'm planted. There's a difference, you know what I mean? When you, when you plant something, you just bury it, you know, with something, you know, and you feel like, Whoop. sometimes I feel like, Whoop. but if I hold in there, somebody say amen. It reminds me of that old story I used to say all the time, but uh, I love watermelon. Anybody like watermelon? Yeah. But the best place, best place to eat that watermelon is that back on an old picnic table, take that one leg and let her rip. I've learned that you could take that watermelon seed, put a little pressure, and it'll go, it'll, spit, it'll go right out. But you take that same little watermelon seed, plant it in the ground with a little pressure, a little dirt, and a little moisture, a little, sun, a little heat of the sun. Somebody say, man, it begins to spring forth. I'm here to tell you, don't be squirting out all the time. Amen. You're not buried. You're planted. If you'll stay in there, if you have the right perspective, you'll begin to blossom. You'll begin to bear fruit. And the devil's telling you that it's over. I'm here to tell you, you're not buried, but you are planted. Give the Lord a shout of praise. This too shall pass. I may be down, but I'm coming up stronger. 
I'm coming up better. I'm coming up increased, promoted, in a new level. Somebody say amen. Number three. Oh, we're getting close to home. Amen. You got to have an attitude of lunch. No, an attitude of victory. An attitude of victory. Don't look at the Goliath. David looked at the Goliath and said, this day I will defeat you. And I'm going to feed your head to the birds. Now, he didn't say, I hope so. I'm praying about it. Boy, I wish I had a dollar every time somebody told me that. Over the 40 years I've been in ministry. Well, I'm praying about it. You sure look like it. Amen. That's a big cop out. That's a big no. Come on, talk to me. That's a big no. Amen. I'm praying about it. No, David didn't say that. I hope I defeat you. Maybe I will. No, David, David declared, you're going to be defeated. I'm going to take your head. I'm going to feed it to the birds. Your declaration should be, I will defeat this depression. I will defeat this addiction. I will come out of debt. I will be healthy. I will be strong. Mm. You may be against the, some opposition today. But don't be intimidated by that report. It could be a medical report. It could be a legal situation. It could be the person sitting right beside of you. I don't know. But you can have an attitude of victory. You got to have an attitude of victory. Somebody said an attitude of victory. 1 Corinthians 15 says, God has put all things under your feet. It's under your feet. That addiction is under your feet. That depression is under your feet. Your struggle of lack, it keeps you from being blessed. It's under your feet. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's under your feet. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. He didn't say that you won't have difficulties. You're going to have difficulties. Challenges will come. Mm. Difficulties will come. Obstacles will come. Even octopus will come. Somebody say amen. God says the problems may form, but you can stay in peace knowing that this won't prosper against you. Oh, the younger I, I mean, the older I get, I appreciate peace and rest in the Lord. So today I speak to you. I speak strength into you. Those that are weak, I speak strength into you. I speak healing in you. Emotionally, physically, mentally, whatever it is. We all need healing. Somebody say amen. amen. I speak termination. New vision. Favor in your life. Wisdom. Courage. 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 Be not afraid. How many times you read that? Be not afraid. That's what it means. Don't be not to be afraid. Amen. I declare you will be, not be intimidated. You are strong. You are confident. And you're well able. I believe something good is about to happen. I believe the tide of the battle is beginning to turn. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Say, God, turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. God, turn it around. I love to sing that song. I don't know all these new songs, but I know God turned it around. Amen. Because I've seen God turn it around many times in my life. Somebody say amen. We will not be overcome because we're overcomers. We will not be the victim because we are the victors. God will not only bring you out, but he will bring you out better off than you were before. Now listen to me. I'm going to close, but I'm, a couple of statements I want to make, and I want you to jot them down mentally or on a card somewhere. It's the small choices that no one sees that result in the things that everybody wants. It's the small choices that no one sees that results in the things everybody wants. It's those choices that we make. 
that nobody sees. And all of a sudden, they see the results. We want the results, but we don't want to go through the process. And I'm here to tell you, you can't skip the process. You're not a quitter. You're a finisher. A lot of times in life's journey, in my journey as well, we are challenged with the fact that we need faith. Somebody say we need faith. But we don't need faith. You don't have to have the faith to finish. Are you understand what I'm talking about? So when I look at the obstacle, what, what I'm leading God for, I think, how can I, do I have enough faith to get through all of this? And when we look at it that way, no, we don't. We just need to have faith to start. And I learned when I take that first step of faith to start, God helps me to get to the finish. It's like somebody said, go to your house and you call your name. Pastor wants to eat the cherry pie. You want this pie? I said, no, I can't eat that big pie. But if I sit there long enough, you cut me a little piece. I'll eat that bad boy. A little at a time. Sometimes God over, we look at an obstacle and the enemy wants us to be overwhelmed by the size of it. It takes a little bite at a time. Step. Would you stand this morning? If you just join me this morning, come on, grab your grab your honey, somebody. If she ain't your honey, it'll be your honey before it's over. Come on. Let's come and have a season of prayer this morning. And this is where we live folks every day. We have challenges and obstacles. So Lord help us to have the right perspective keep it, but it's the battle that the enemy wants to come in. If you come right now, just slip right out. Just slip right out. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm not going to ask you to do anything stupid. I'm, I'm just going to... It's power when we step out. It's just step faith. Just step out. Just step right out. Pray when they just... Father, I pray right now, Lord, as we come boldly to the throne of grace. God, we believe you. But help our under. Lord, we sometimes are overwhelmed by the, the giant in our lives. And we don't know how we can defeat it, but keep our right perspective and magnify the Lord. We need static. We will overcome the obstacle. When we come out, we're going to come out stronger. And God gets the glory. Because there's only God who can bring us out of our situation. It's only God who can give us peace in our turmoil. It's only God who can turn it around. But he's more than willing and able. So Lord, put us a new spirit in us. Caleb and Joshua. God can say, for me and my house, serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said, give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on.